Hey everybody, how's it going? Scott Spritzer here with Robert Faringo. We are DocSports.com. We're talking a little Super Bowl Sunday action with those Tampa Bay Buccaneers taking on the Kansas City Chiefs. KC lane three or three and a half, depending on the book. And uh, the total basically been sitting around 56 and a half since it opened. Uh, that uh, line came down a little bit in some books. Some dropped it from three and a half to three right out of the gate, so to speak, with respected money coming into the Buccaneers. And I want to say something. There's probably going to be Oh, if you played a drinking game, 15 to 18 shots you'd have to take right now throughout this video when I say respected money or public money. Now, you can take that shot if you wish, but the bottom line is, is that you are not going to be swayed, I hope, because I say respected money or public money. Uh, the public wins too sometimes, all right? And uh, they do sway the Super Bowl line like no other line throughout the course of a football season. So I just wanted to point that out there. Just because I say respected money doesn't mean we'll win. Uh, just wanted to, again, clear that up. But before we get to all of that good stuff, uh, you see on that banner at the top of the screen, free $60 account. If you're new to the Docs, uh, DocSports.com videos, basically what that means is, is that if you're not yet a member at DocSports.com, you can get a free $60 account simply by clicking on the link below this video. And then what you can do is use those free 60 bucks on anybody on the roster on DocSports.com. Any handicappers, daily packages, Roberts, mine, anybody else on the roster. It is as simple as, again, getting yourself set up by striking that link at the bottom of the video, free $60 account. All right, so there's this great article over at DocSports.com. And I, I do recommend that everybody watching takes a couple of minutes to go over and check out this article written by Robert Faringo, one of the best writers I've seen in the business. And he gave his reasons as to why he thinks this is going to be potentially a one-sided Super Bowl. Uh, as I mentioned, the lines makers are keeping it around a field goal, adjusting juice, or making it a half point on the three. Uh, Robert, I don't think you are really concerned about this coming down to a three-point game or give or take on that half a point you make a very strong case for the defending Super Bowl champs to be the first repeat champs in what, 16, 17 years. Yeah, let me first say that I respect all money. I, I have nothing but oh, the yeah. utmost respect for all of <laughs> all of my own money and the fun things that it does for me. So I just wanna put that out there. But yeah, normally comes Super Bowl time, I'm like a Super Bowl Grinch, okay? Friends, family, random people that I know, they always ask me because they know what my job is. They're like, oh, who's going to win the Super Bowl? Who should I bet on the Super Bowl? And my normal answer is don't. Like, just because it's the Super Bowl, you don't have to bet money on it. You don't get extra money. There isn't hero points that you get for winning a bet on the Super Bowl. I, I tell them, I'm like, I can find you more value on a Tuesday in November in college basketball than I can on most Super Bowl sure. ones, okay? However, that being said, there has been a handful of Super Bowls over the last 15 years that I felt very strongly about, that I instantly, and I'm talking after the NFC and AFC championship games that night, I'm like, that's the, that's the game. That's the game. That team is going to win. This one isn't going to be close, okay? And this year is one of those instances. I, I have that feeling about Kansas City going into the Super Bowl. And instantly that night, I bet it that night. I bet it at three and at three and a half the night that they won the AFC championship game. And uh, yeah, I just, people have been asking me for my predictions. I, it's the Chiefs. It's the Chiefs all the way. And I'll tell you what, you made a compelling argument. There's no doubt about it. Of course, me being who I am, and, and you're a cynic, so you can, you know, you can probably respect where I come from. Of course. Uh, but anyway, uh, I'm going to throw some numbers at you. Now, you mentioned, for instance, that, uh, you know, Kansas City, or excuse me, Tampa Bay beat up on some chump-type teams. And, and, of course, I'm paraphrasing. You didn't use the word chump in the article. Uh, but they beat up on some teams that were easy along the way. Uh, and then, of course, you did say these words that Tampa Bay – in a nutshell, should not be here. Explain yourself when you say Tampa Bay probably should not be here. They only beat two teams that, as of right now, at the, at the end of the season, had a winning record this year, okay? They beat Green Bay twice. They beat New Orleans once, all right? They beat New Orleans once in three tries. They beat Green Bay twice, but they absolutely should not have won that game last week. And if you look at how they played in the playoffs, they weren't particularly dominating over a bad Washington Redskins team. The next week they go to New Orleans, and in their third try, 
they're able to beat the Saints, but they were gifted a plus four turnover margin. And even with a plus four turnover margin, it was still what a 20 to 20 game in the in the fourth quarter. They again they only barely won that game. Last week against Green Bay, they win 31-25, but Green Bay just didn't play well. If you take away that fluke play at the end of the first half, that just awful touchdown to Scotty Miller, and then Green Bay on their first possession of the second half, fumbling and giving it to Tampa Bay inside their 10-yard line, Green Bay should have won that game, okay? And even if, with those two touchdowns that they just gifted Tampa Bay, Green Bay still had a chance to go for the tie with under three minutes left before their coach threw up on himself and made probably the worst coaching decision I've ever made or I've ever seen in a football game. So Tampa Bay has been less than dominant in getting to this point where Kansas City has been consistently dominant over the last two years. They were the best team last year and they were the Super Bowl champs. They have been the best team all season long, indisputably the best team. Even when Pittsburgh went on their run to start the season and, oh, Pittsburgh Steelers, if you go back and read my NFL power rankings, never once did I have Pittsburgh over Kansas City. They've been the best team. They are the best team. And I think that that's going to show itself on Sunday. Let me throw these at you. I, I read the article and immediately I started scratching down notes because I, I knew I wanted to play devil's advocate whether I agree with you or not. <laughs> but when I looked at KC this year, they beat Atlanta by three, New Orleans by three, Miami by six, Denver by six. They beat Las Vegas by four and they lost to Las Vegas by eight, by two, and they beat LA uh, early in the season in overtime by three. So seven and one in those eight games, only one of those teams made it to the postseason. And of those seven wins, the average victory margin was less than four points per game by Kansas City. Um, I'm going to throw that out there because you mentioned that, you know, Tampa Bay's schedule is a little bit soft. But I also want to say this at the end of that, do you feel, I mean, we know how good Kansas City is, okay? we This isn't like their first Super Bowl, Patrick Mahomes' first season. We look at all those scores and say they're overrated. We know what they are. They're not overrated. They were my number one team all season, too, by the way, power rating-wise. But... Have they shown that they have flipped the switch in your in your opinion to go from you know, skating by some of those games? And, and let's be honest that, you know, some of those games, they were up by a couple of touchdowns and kind of maybe let off the gas a little bit. Uh, but have they flipped the switch in your opinion? OK, se several things to tackle that, because um, a lot of people have brought that up. They're what, one and nine against the spread in their last 10 games. Yeah. They, they just broke that streak against Buffalo in the AFC championship game. But to answer your question, yes, they have flipped the, the, the switch. And teams in the NFL cannot do that. Teams don't just flip a switch. You need momentum. You need consistency. Only truly elite, truly great teams, and there's only been a handful of them, can do that. Can just kind of coast because they're that much better than people and turn it on when they want to. And Kansas City can do that. You know, they are 1-9 and nine against the spread, but that's not really that uncommon. And I'll, I'll bring up a parallel team. Look at Baltimore from last year, okay? 15 wins in the regular season. Kansas City Super Bowl champions. Coming into this season, all right, you had to know that the books were going to overcorrect during the regular season. And that those teams that have those monster seasons usually underperform. When you win a Super Bowl championship, it's really hard to get up for a regular season game in October, okay? Especially when you know you're going back to the playoffs and you know that you're playing for titles at that point. So just like Baltimore had that step back in the regular season, I'm not surprised that Kansas City had a little bit of a step back. But now they're turning it on. They didn't cover against Cleveland, but that's only because Patrick Mahomes didn't play for a quarter and a half. They were well on their way to a blowout win in that game. I also I feel Casey, like- I agree. <laughs> I agree. Yeah, I, I mean, yeah, that, 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 was ridicu that was ridiculous that Cleveland didn't cover the spread and they pretty much dominated Buffalo in that. And another thing that I mentioned in the article, talking about what you met or, or what you said about them flipping the switch and how I say that there's only been a handful of teams I've ever seen in my lifetime that are capable of, do that, of doing that. You go back to what they did last year in the playoffs where they were down double digits in every single game and came back and won every single game. Okay, that put, that, the ability to do that puts something in the mentality of a team where they know no matter who they're playing, no matter what the situation, they are going to come back and win. They have that certitude about themselves. I see that with Kansas City. I don't see that with Tampa Bay. And I think a lot of that has to do with the fact that a lot of these guys in the Bucs, while they're excellent players, Pro Bowls, past, present, and future, uh, a lot of high, high caliber individuals on that Tampa Bay team. 
they were kind of thrown together this year. This is their first year playing together. This is their first time being in the situation compared to a team like Kansas City, where it's basically all of the same guys that were in the situation last year. And again, the capper to me is that San Francisco team last year was much better than this Tampa Bay team is right now. Absolutely. Defensively, it's not even close. Offensively, of course, we're going to take Tom Brady over Jimmy Garoppolo. But the way that they were running the ball and and the numbers that San Francisco was putting up offensively last year, they were juggernaut. You know what? Kansas City beat them by double digits. And, oh, by the way, they came back from a double-digit deficit to do that. So I just don't see how, how Tampa Bay can stay with Kansas City. It's a good story. Tom Brady, Super Bowl, right. you know, against Patrick Mahomes. There's a lot of great subplots in this. But when you just look at the game and look at the macro of the game, Kansas City is just a much better team. Let me, let me jump in there for just a second on the – because I wanted to get comparisons between coaches and, you know, like, for instance, you just brought up San Francisco – um, you Brady versus Garoppolo. Who do you give an edge to? How many points? One point, half a point, one side or the other? Because I want to dissect that for just a second. Well, it's a hundred percent Brady, and it's worth probably four and a half points, and not just because okay. of Brady, but because of the weapons. Tampa Bay's weapons are just a lot better than San Francisco's right. weapons were last year in the passing game. San Francisco was very good in the passing game. Mm-hmm. A lot of that came because they were so physically dominant in the run game. But when you look at this Tampa Bay team, you got Antonio Brown, you got Mike Evans, you got Gronkowski, you got Cameron Bray, you got Scotty Miller, you got Leonard Fournette. You get a lot of Pro Bowls there. You got a good offensive line. So just on the whole, this Tampa Bay offense is at least four points better than San Francisco's offense was last year. And if you go and look at the numbers that San Francisco put up last year, they were pretty impressive. And see, the reason I, I give Tampa Bay against San Francisco of last year more credit is because Tampa Bay is the number one ranked DVOA defense this season, weighted and total DVOA, and they've been top three since week four. That's as good as San Francisco was last year. And again, I agree with you. I think Brady's worth at least four points, maybe a little bit more than that even, if we got down and you know dissected the whole thing with Garoppolo. Um, so for that reason, I do think Tampa Bay is better than what San Francisco was last year. That doesn't mean KC can't come in here and beat them up and cover the point spread. There's no doubt about that. Also wanted to ask you real quickly. Now, listen, LaFleur for Green Bay, the head coach. It's funny when I was watching that game. I was texting back and forth with a couple of other handicappers outside of docks. We were midway through the first quarter of that game, and I said, LaFleur looks like Darren the Headlight Syndrome right now. His mind is on screaming at the officials. He is not focused on this football game. And it played out, as you mentioned, the horrible call late in the game when they ended up kicking the field goal rather than going for it. Uh, Rodgers thought he could throw that pass when he did because he figured they'd be going for it. Just a horrible job coaching-wise. And when I look at these two coaches now going against each other, we all love Andy Reid, but we know what he does. What is your advantage as far as maybe a point or so that you would give to one of these coaching staffs over the other, if you do? Okay, Andy Reid is obviously by far the better coach of these two, okay? Career-wise, contributions Mm -hmm. to the game, go on and on about Andy Reid, okay? But in a one-game situation like this, Mm -hmm. I I don't want to say give it edge, but I give a slight edge to Tampa Bay, and here's why. Bruce Arians is exactly the type of head coach you want going into a game like this as an underdog. Because Bruce Arians doesn't, he doesn't give a damn. He doesn't care. He doesn't care. He's (laughs) damn the torpedoes, all balls, no brains, full steam ahead, does not care. He's going to throw the ball deep. He's going to attack. He's going to have his guys ready to attack, okay? That's what you need to go up against a team like like Kansas City, really. That's Mm -hmm. some of the mistakes that San Francisco made last year is because Kyle Shanahan is not a very good coach, and he's the wrong coach to put in that situation because he is a little bit too passive. On the flip side, Andy Reid is, again, Hall of Famer, amazing, Mm -hmm. incredible, okay? However... Throughout his career, he has had some issues in big games, some game management issues, some clock management issues. I frankly think that that's the only way that Tampa Bay could win this game is if, as we've seen the last two weeks, teams like New Orleans, teams like Green Bay, two teams that were better than Tampa Bay. You cannot tell me that they were not better than Tampa Bay. I refuse to believe that they weren't better than Tampa Bay. If another team that's better than Tampa Bay, Kansas City, makes the same type of mental mistakes, that those teams did, turnovers, poor game management, then Tampa Bay has a shot. If they don't, 
if Andy Reid is as cool, calm, and collected as he was last year in the Super Bowl, then again, Kansas City is two scores better than Tampa Bay. And when they played each other this year, remember, these two teams played each other, and when you were rattling off those scores, this is what came to mind. That wasn't even close. That game wasn't even close. It was in Tampa I Bay. And I didn't even see that in the score. 17 nothing at that first quarter. 27 right. to 10 to start the fourth quarter. And the final score says 27-24. Oh, they must have played him close. They didn't play him close at all. It was not even close in that game. And I feel like Kansas City is even better now than they were then. This doesn't mean anything to this game, but I love to throw this kind of stuff out there. No AFC team has ever won a season series, ever swept a season series against an NFC team. So beating them in the regular season has meant a loss in the Super Bowl for the AFC team. Again, that means nothing to this game. I just love to throw that stuff out there. But you're right. It does, but it doesn't score that game. I didn't even bring up that three-point game that KC won yeah. because it was, a dot, it, was, it was a 14, 17-point win that looked like a three-point game. The makeup said three. You take off the makeup. It was a, a blowout. But it's funny that you mentioned that about the NFC versus the AFC, because when I go back and look at those other Super Bowls that I was just all in on, that I just loved from jump, uh, the two Giants-Patriots Super Bowls, all right, the New Orleans-Indianapolis Super Bowl, that first Giants-Patriots Super Bowl and that New Orleans Super Bowl were the most I ever bet on, on any Super Bowls. Uh, the Seattle-Denver Super Bowl was another one that just instantly I knew Seattle was just so much better than them, and it wasn't going to be a game. In all of those instances, part of the reason that I loved those teams is because the NFC those years was so much better than the AFC. So much better. It wasn't even close. When I look at the NFL this year, and this is the first time I really feel like I can say this in a long time, the AFC was significantly better than the NFC this year. When you're looking at the top tier teams, top to bottom, however you want to do it, the NFC was a better conference than the AFC this year. So the fact that you have the better team out of the better conference going up against the weaker team out of the weaker conference, it's part of the reason I love Kansas City. And folks, we're going to get a score, a prediction from Robert in just a second. One final question. How much do you put into the offensive line injuries, the two tackles missing for KC, Eric Fisher being, you know, Patrick Mahomes, his buddy, his, uh, his, his guard, lifeguard, if you will, being his left tackle and protecting his blind side. And then, of course, having to switch guys around to play outside of their natural positions in some instances to make up for the two losses. How much do you put into that? I mean, it certainly doesn't help, and that's one of the things that will keep this game maybe a little bit closer than it would be because Tampa Bay's front four is capable of putting pressure on it. But, again, it's Patrick Mahomes, man. The guy's at the height of his powers, all right? He, when all is said and done, he's going to be probably the best we've ever seen. He's completely unbelievable. And I think that he's going to be able to compensate – for that Andy Reid is going to do some things schematically to compensate for that um yeah I mean it doesn't again it doesn't help but it's it's not a deal breaker I think two weeks from between games is much better obviously for KC in preparation due to those offensive line injuries and switches and all that kind of if this was game was played last week without the week off I would have factored it into my handicap more than I do uh with the week off in between all right he's Robert Faringo Final score in a second, but you got what's going on this week? When folks jump on the Robert Faringa homepage at docsports.com, what can they expect this weekend? So it's a big weekend, big weekend, obviously, because of the Super Bowl, um, but just a big weekend because if you look at the schedule in college basketball and in the NBA, there are some very juicy situations on Saturday. On Saturday, I'm planning on having my first eight unit NBA game of the year. Uh, mm -hmm. Like to point out, I'm working on a streak, I have six straight winning. NBA seasons, going for number seven in a row. This is my first big, big play of the season. I'm very excited about that Saturday night. Uh, Saturday during the afternoon, um, I have mm -hmm. a big college basketball play, seven-unit college basketball play. Again, I'm working on 13 out of 15 winning years in college basketball mm -hmm. on a plus 4,000 run right now with that. Been very good with my top plays of the last two years. So it's not just about Sunday. Uh, help pad your stat or excuse me, pad your stack and pad your roll with some big NBA and college basketball winners Saturday. And then you'll have a little extra money for uh, for some of those prop bets on Sunday. Nice. I love it. I, I wore this today. The, the, it's a Vegas Golden Knight shirt. And the reason I wore it is because the last two weeks I've done a basketball show with Doug Upstone, which we're going to uh, continue next week. And I've worn this both times and we've swept the last two Saturdays in college basketball. And so nice. I, I, like I got to bring it out. 
because I'm not doing the show with Doug this week. I'm doing it with you. I'm not going to let <laughs> you got to go. Hey, man, if you think something is helping you win games, you stick to it. Abby Calvin Lelouch, yes. Nuke Lelouch told us that 30 years ago. If you think something is allowing you to win, you keep doing it until it stops winning. And so I brought and up as the good as you've been, as good as you've been in college basketball, hopefully some of that magic will rub off. On me. Hopefully, some of the magic of the shirt will rub off on me. So let's keep it going. You're doing pretty well yourself, as you mentioned, up right, to so four thousand. You wanted a fi- you wanted a final score, right? Final score in this oh, yeah, game. Let's the final score. I have Kansas City thirty-eight, Tampa Bay twenty-seven. It may be chalk, but I don't care. I like Kansas City. I like the over. They've averaged thirty-four point one points over the last three years in their last seven playoff games facing a variety of teams and defenses that are better than Tampa Bay. I don't see a scenario where Kansas City doesn't score at least 34 points in this game. Tampa Bay has its own array of weapons. They're going to they're gonna get their points. But in, in the end, Kansas City is just the better team here. I got 38-27 for the Chiefs. They go back to back. And again, I recommend folks to go over to DocSports.com, read the article, because of course you can read every single word that Robert wrote. It's very eloquently written and it's It's going to make you think. If you like Tampa Bay or KC, it will make you think, and that's why I read articles. I want someone who can make me think a little bit differently than I have been on a game, and that's what Robert does with this article. So check that out. Uh, Again, the $60 free account, you see it on your screen. Click on the link below the video. Get yourself set up for that free $60 account. For Robert Faringo, I'm Scott Spritzer. Let's put this weekend in the win column. We are DocSports.com.